proceed. Good morning. My name is Lisa K. Meyer. I'm a resident of Kapuhulu. Um, I also frequent the Waikiki area. A lot of my friends are also residents of the Waikiki area. Um, haven't met that. Haven't met you before, <laughs> Mayor, the Mayor of Waikiki. But um, <laughs> um, I am also. Um, I currently do therapy as part of my practicum and intern with clients, and a lot of them are homeless um, families and individuals. I have also been a mental health specialist with case management agencies and volunteered at a lot of homeless resources and shelters. Um, although I can empathize with the businesses and residents affected by what we call deviant behaviors and choices of the homeless, um, there are many factors that we've seen other cities that have tried to do this that show us that these are ineffective, they don't work, um, they're inhumane, they're not cost effective at all, actually a waste of time. And the target, the goals of these bills actually go to waste and it ends up targeting the people that we don't intend to. Um, these bills do not work. Um, I've talked to a lot of Chamber of Commerce um, and the representatives of businesses in other states that have, um, in cities that have enacted this to save time. Um, I spoke to Melody Bassett. She's a Chamber of Commerce rep for downtown businesses in Chico, um, California. Um, she said the bill itself did not work, um, the actual bill. Um, there was other things that worked that hopefully I'll get to, but what ended up affecting it in that state, in that city, and other cities was the lack of resources, so enforcement, pretty much. And we know in Hawaii, we really don't have those resources as well. We've seen from all the robberies and the crime that has been going on, we don't have the resources. Um, as well as um, law enforcement abandoned it. So like in some cities, law enforcement couldn't even continue doing it because they realized it was ineffective. You get repeat offenders um, also you know, they realize that they are targeting and affecting families and children. And a lot of times there are individuals with mental illness or physical disabilities that they realize, you know, they're targeting wrongly and it's not a choice that they're choosing, but actually their only choice. Um, These bills also, my second point, these bills are also a financial burden, more so to the city's economy because of the required resources. You need more police officers. You need to educate the police officers in how to gain rapport and treat um, the individuals so that there aren't fights, there aren't more conflicts. Also, um, all these meetings, as well as the research that, that will be utilized after, so imprisonment, which causes more money. Also, a lot of times, those with mental illnesses, they get more hopeless, and in order to find some place where they're not gonna be um, targeted or criminalized, and also because they become more hopeless, hopeless, they go into the ERs, into inpatient treatment, which actually causes costs us more money, and um, as a result. And these bills, um, they are unconstitutional, unconstitutional, unethical, uneducated, redundant, considering how many cities have done this and it hasn't worked. Um, like Portland, I think it and expired and you have to redo it. San Francisco isn't enforcing it no longer. And in Chico, they're actually using other means that everybody has talked about here today, other solutions that are effective and cost efficient. Okay. Um, Thank you very much. Okay. I need to ask you to please conclude. Okay. Um, so Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So as I've said, these bills um, are a waste of time, a waste of money. Inhumane are likely to cause more problems. Um, you can't make um, decisions, especially if you know it doesn't work. And I don't think in any cities has shown any real um, solutions, like it hasn't really worked. Um, what has worked though in the other cities um, wasn't the bills itself, but private organizations or even the city um, funding um, more cost-effective and solutions. So like even the Chamber of Commerce, the businessmen in Chico actually banded together and made an ambassadors group that they actually were out, outreach teams that went into the community and they built rapport, they educated the homeless, they educated themselves especially on mental illness, physical disabilities, homelessness, and they ended up solving the solution. But the only thing about this, we don't know how long that's gonna last because you know, after a while, the businesses feel like, shouldn't the government be doing this for us, <laughs> you know? So, um, also, you guys are role models. Um, when we saw an increase in the sweeps, we also saw an increase in um, civilian murders against 
um, the homeless. So you guys are role models to our youth. And if they see you guys treating the homeless in a certain way where their targets, their problems, you do stigmatize them further. And you do end up, the youths will end up labeling them the same way. But um, thank you. Thank you very much.